Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Limuel E. Hernandez, your Pinoy math teacher. Limits are the backbone of calculus, and calculus is called the mathematics of change. The study of limits is necessary in studying change in detail. The evaluation of a particular limit is what underlies the formulation of the derivative and the integral of a function. For starters, imagine that you are going to watch a basketball game. When you choose seats, you would want to be as close to the action as possible. You would want to be as close to the players as possible and have the best view of the game, as if you were in the basketball court yourself. Take note that you cannot actually be in the court and join the players, but you will be close enough to describe clearly what is happening in the game. This is how it is with limits of functions. We will consider functions of a single variable and study the behavior of the function as its variable approaches a particular value, a constant. The variable can only take values very very close to the constant but it cannot equal the constant itself. However, the limit will be able to describe clearly what is happening to the function near that constant. Consider a function f of a single variable x. Consider a constant c which the variable x will approach. So c may or may not be in the domain of f. The limit to be denoted by l is the unique real value that f of x will approach as x approaches c. In symbols, we write this process as something like this. This is read as the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. To illustrate, let us consider limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3. Here, f of x equals 2x plus 1 and the constant c, which x will approach, is 3. To evaluate the given limit, we will make use of a table, so to help us keep track of the effect that the approach of x toward 3 will have on f of x. Of course, on the number line, x may approach 3 in two ways, through values on its left and through values on its right. We first consider approaching 3 from its left or through values less than 3. Remember that the values to be chosen should be close to 3. So for x, let us have the following values. If we substitute these x values to our function 2x plus 1, we will get the following values for f of x. Now, we consider approaching 3 from its right or through values greater than but close to 3. Observe that as the values of x get closer and closer to 3, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 7. This behavior can be shown no matter what set of values or what direction is taken in approaching 3. So in symbols, limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3 equals 7. Here's another example. Limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. Here, c equals negative 1 and f of x equals x squared plus 1. We start again by approaching negative 1 from the left. Let us have the following values for x. So these are numbers less than negative 1. And these are the numbers that we get when we substitute x values to our function.
Now, we approach negative 1 from the right. Let us have the following values for x. So we choose values that are greater than negative 1. Alright, and these are the corresponding values upon substituting x values to our function. The tables show that as x approaches negative 1, f of x approaches 2. In symbols, limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 equals 2. Investigate limit of absolute value of x as x approaches 0 through a table of values. Approaching 0 from the left and from the right, we get the following tables. Notice that as x approaches 0 from left and from right, f of x becomes closer and closer to 0. Hence, limit of absolute value of x as x approaches 0 equals 0. Investigate limit of x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 by constructing table of values. Here, c equals 1 and f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1. Take note that 1 is not in the domain of f. Substituting 1 to our function gives us 0 for denominator. And we know that it is undefined. But this is not a problem. In evaluating a limit, remember that we only need to go very close to 1. We will not go to 1 itself. We now approach 1 from the left. So these are the values of x that gets closer and closer to 1. And these are the values we get after substituting these x values to our function. Now, approaching 1 from the right. These are the values of x that gets closer and closer to 1. And these are the values we get after substituting these x values to our function. The tables show that as x approaches 1, f of x approaches negative 3. In symbols, limit of x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 equals negative 3. Investigate through a table of values the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 if f of x equals x plus 1 if x is less than 4 and x minus 4 squared plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 4. This looks a bit different but the logic and procedure are exactly the same. We still approach the constant 4 from the left and from the right. But note that we should evaluate the appropriate corresponding functional expression. In this case, when x approaches 4 from the left, the values taken should be substituted in f of x equals x plus 1. Indeed, this is the part of the function which accepts values less than 4. So let us consider the following values for x. Substituting these x values to x plus 1 gives us the following values for f of x. On the other hand, when x approaches 4 from the right, the values taken should be substituted in x minus 4 squared plus 3. So let us have the following values for x.
Substituting these x values to x minus 4 squared plus 3 gives us the following values for f of x. Observe that the values that f of x approaches are not equal. Namely, f of x approaches 5 from the left while it approaches 3 from the right. In such a case, we say that the limit of the given function does not exist. For in symbols, limit of f of x as x approaches 4 does not exist. We need to emphasize an important fact. We do not say that limit of f of x as x approaches 4 equals d and e or does not exist because d and e is not a value. In the previous example, d and e indicated that the function moves in different directions as its variable approaches c from the left and from the right. In other cases, the limit fails to exist because it is undefined such as for limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 so which leads to division of 1 by 0. Have you noticed a pattern in the way we have been investigating a limit? We have been specifying whether x will approach a value c from the left through values less than c or from the right through values greater than c. This direction may be specified in the limit notation limit of f of x as x approaches c by adding certain symbols. If x approaches c from the left or through values less than c, then we write it as limit of f of x as x approaches c with negative sign as superscript of C. If x approaches C from the right or through values greater than C, then we write limit of f of x as x approaches C with positive sign as superscript of C. We say limit of f of x as x approaches C equals L if and only if limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left equals L and limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right equals L. In other words, for a limit L to exist, the limits from the left and from the right must both exist and be equal to L. Therefore, limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist whenever limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left does not equal limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right. These limits are also referred to as one-sided limits since you only consider values on one side of c. If one knows the graph of f of x, it will be easier to determine its limits as x approaches given values of c. Let us look at the graphs of the following functions. Note that these are the functions that we used earlier. This is the graph of f of x equals 2x plus 1. Hence, the graph clearly confirms that limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 3 equals 7. This is the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 1. It can be seen from the graph that as values of x approach negative 1, the values of f of x approach 2. This confirms that limit of x squared plus 1 as x approaches negative 1 equals 2. Now this is the graph of our previous example where we use the function f of x equals absolute value of x. It is clear that 
limit of absolute value of x as x approaches 0 equals 0. That is, the two sides of the graph both move downward to the origin as x approaches 0. This here is the graph of our previous example where we use the function f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1. Take note that f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1 equals x minus 4 times x minus 1 over x minus 1 or that is equal to x minus 4 provided that x is not equal to 1. This confirms that limit of x squared minus 5x plus 4 over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 equals negative 3. This one right here is the graph of the piecewise function that we have encountered earlier. Again, we can see from the graph that f of x has no limit as x approaches 4. The two separate parts of the function move toward different y levels so y equals 5 from the left, y equals 3 from the right, in the vicinity of c equals 4. That concludes our lesson for this video. Thanks for watching.